that's right. You know what time it is. It's time for the Sugar Creek Fours Build Along 2012. I got my hand on the fire, I'm putting the fire to the seal. Come on, Sugar Creek Fours, won't you tell me what's the deal? Finally, after my camera battery dying with pictures and videos still on my camera, and all kinds of technical problems and then all kinds of uh, human error like messing up the one I was doing for this video and starting over uh, the long evaded sheath making video is here so uh, without further ado man let's make a sheath the first step is to orient the leather for the sheath as you can see I'm gonna use the leather this way and uh, that's gonna make sure that I can serve uh, leather in case I mess up or I make another sheath. I'm going to make a piece of paper that's the same size as the le leather in order to start drawing a pattern. This is what your pattern is going to look like when you've finally drawn it out and here's what the pieces look like separately. So I'm hoping that'll give you a little bit of an idea of what we're after so when I show you um, this is kind of how it's assembled like that and then there will be a welt also. Next, we're going to make a pattern. So we take a piece of paper that's the width of the uh, sheet that we'd like to make. And um, I made this first one a little narrow, two and a half inches. I really should have made it three inches. We're going to write front on the front and back on the back so we don't accidentally uh, make a left-handed sheath or a right-handed sheath if you're left-handed. We're going to draw around the knife, transferring uh, the design on knife onto the pattern. You can see I'm leaving just a little bit along the back of the spine area, a little extra white space because the leather is thick. So now I'm going to draw the outline of the sheath of how I want it to look and I'm just kind of following the um, design of the knife. I made a couple of marks. Then I'm coming straight across the top because that's where the top of the sheath needs to be. And then I'm just drawing where the sheath is going to end and then making a little bit of a mark where the flap is going to come over and drawing that out onto the pattern. So that's what it's going to look like. You can see both the front and the back and you can see where the flap is. I'm going to cut this out now, making sure that I'm cutting it out on the front of the knife. So that's the basic shape of the pattern. Looks like this when it's folded, and uh, you can see how the knife fits into it. I'm checking in here. Remember, give yourself extra room. I made this a little too narrow. And then we're going to transfer the pattern to the leather. Simply going to put it on there, making sure that uh, we have it on the nice side up and draw around it. That's the first part. Then we're going to work on um, making sure that the uh, belt loop part fits onto the knife. And I'm just drawing that on the same pattern and then we're going to cut that out and use that for a pattern to make the belt loop. I'm going to cut that out, just use this blank um, to draw and make my pattern. I'm folding it in half, then folding it at the top. That's so that I have the middle and that the point that I'm going to cut into it is even with the rest of the leather. So you can see there, I'm just take a ruler and go down on each side, making an exact triangular point that looks nice and neat. Then we just cut that out and we have the pattern for the part that's going to form our belt loop. We draw that out and then we're going to just draw using the same pattern a little spacer. It's going to look like that on the top, uh, that little small piece. And then we're just going to cut the parts out. You can trim them with a knife. Uh, I have a big pair of scissors and a knife that I use um, that's very sharp. Um, just be careful that you don't cut yourself when you're working with the leather. So I'm cutting out the little spacer here. And remember, um, this piece of leather is not going to be dyed. There's our three pieces again. This is what you should end up 
uh, with the leather looking like and the smooth side up. And now that I have the outline of the knife, I can also cut out a pattern here for uh, the welt that we're going to put in later on, and uh, we'll come back to that. Um, this really can be done later. Next step is to wet the leather with warm water. You can see I'm not soaking it, but I am wetting it pretty generously. This is going to allow it to be flexible. I'm going to bend it in half here and, and uh, put some pretty good pressure on it. I don't want to crease it too hard, but I, I do want it to be able to take this shape after it's dyed. We're going to dye it with homemade leather dye, and I made this dye out of uh, using two packages of RIT dye dark brown and mixing those two packages with one bottle of heat, one 12 fluid ounce bottle of heat, and just put it in a mason jar. We're going to apply the dye to the damp leather. That's one of the reasons we dampen it, because it actually holds the dye better. And the dye doesn't soak in as far. We're just going to dye it real evenly. Um, you don't have to be too meticulous. You may have to do this several times. Just let it dry and put another coat on. And then we're also doing the inside of the sheath where you're going to be able to see that and the belt loop. Now we're going to adjust the belt loop so that the stitching doesn't hit it when it comes through. We're going to trim it. And then we're just going to use rubber contact, uh, leather working contact cement. Um, to glue that on, you can see here I'm gluing the little spacer on. And then the belt loop is going to go on top like that. Once I have it trimmed, I'm going to use this tool, which is an edger. This is really an optional step. You don't have to do this, but it, it makes the stitching uh, sit down in and be protected in this little groove. If you don't have this, it's fine. You just put the stitching right on top of the leather. But if you're going to invest in even a couple tools, I would get this tool for sure. You can see how I'm using it to just groove evenly. It works along the edge and just cuts a little channel for my stitching. So I would get this tool and I would get a tool for marking your stitches, which is this tool right here. Um, you can see those two wooden handle tools. The one uh, on top is a wheel that marks the uh, stitches evenly. And when I'm running it over something small like this, I'm more pushed down on top of it rather than trying to roll it and having it kind of get uh, away from me. Next, we're just going to drill holes. Um, I'm using, I believe, a 332nd uh, drill here. Just drilling through those holes, and it's glued together so it holds together. And then this is what we're going to stitch down through. This is the easiest way. You can use a hand drill, too. So I've got a length of... Uh, thread on here. I'm sewing into the second hole. I'm going to pull it through and leave just a little bit of thread uh, hanging out there. Sorry that I'm a little bit out of the camera. And then just go back into the first hole, come back through, and go right through the hole that you came through first so that you've got it kind of locked down there. And now what you're going to do is just sew back and forth through uh, every other hole. So what that means is there's going to be a stitch in every other hole, and then when we get when we get to the end, you're simply going to start through here and do it back the exact same way. So you're, in a sense, sewing it twice, as it were, and then every hole is filled with a stitch. So here's a little straight razor that I made that the uh, blade actually cracked during heat treat, and it turned out so nice and bums me out, but it's the perfect tool to uh, cut off our thread here. I've left it a little long, and what we're going to do to uh, really make sure this locks down is we're just going to burn uh, that nylon. So you can see it kind of melts right down. I let it burn a little bit, not enough to burn the stitches. And then I just take this little bolt with a nut on it, just push down. Don't use your finger. This stuff is really hot, and that's fully secured. Next, we're going to adjust the welt. So we check the welt for fit. And it's looking really good. I'm going to check it with the knife here. And as you can see, the knife fits in good. Um, I've left just a little bit extra. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the welt in and I'm going to mark where I want to trim it a little bit. And then I'm going to cut just a little bit off of the end here. 
so that there's a little bit of room as the leather bends. So I, I just clip this off like this and then we're going to skive that leather right there which means to shave it at an angle so that when the sheath comes together it fits really nicely and goes together well. So I just hold it at an angle and skive down through it like this. Be careful not to do it uh, too much and get it too shallow. I'm not trying to take all that much leather off. And then you just flip it over and do the other side the same way. It makes a wedge shape that will fit into the fold better and not make your tip look fat. So you can see here uh, kind of what it looks like. I'll try to hold it together for you. And then we're going to put the knife in and push down on the welt pinch it between my thumb and finger here and then I'm just gonna take a pen and I'm gonna mark along the line on the welt the right depth for that to go in to pinch the knife. I wanna get that right because I want good retention on the knife. I don't want it too tight or too loose and you can see the mark there that's where I want to glue the welt. So I'm gonna put it down, hold the back of it, adjust the front forward so that I have the good tightness and then just I'm gonna mark here so I know where to apply my contact cement. So I just brush on some contact cement here. I'm just trying to keep it the glue in those lines so that I don't get a lot of glue into the sheath and then while that's drying I'm, or getting slightly dry I do the welt. Now the welt is ready to place into the sheath I'm going to push it down firmly. The glue's not dry, but it's tacky. I'm going to put some glue on the other side so that it has time to start to uh, kind of get tacky. And then I'm going to mark a place for the drain hole. So this is an optional step, but I'm marking here where a drain hole is going to go. And you can put this in the front of the sheath like I'm doing right now, or you can put it on the back of the sheath as well. So here it is, what it would look like on the front. And of course, you could put it back here on the back as well. And as you can see, I glued the welt up. Now, I forgot to film cutting the, the uh, groove uh, for stitching, but here's the stitching wheel. I'm marking the stitches, and I'm just repeating the steps that we did before. I'll mark where the holes need to go, I'll drill them out, and then like this, and then we'll begin to sew again. A little thing I do is usually use about six times the length of thread as what I'm sewing. And so I have a piece that is just about six times, five and a half, six times as long as this sheath. And uh, I want plenty so that I have enough thread to uh, sew everything up. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just doing a stitch where you stitch through every other hole. I'll get to the end of the sheath, come all the way back, and then I'll have a nice even looking stitch. It's tough to pull through sometimes, so you can use a pair of pliers like this and very gently pull it through without breaking the eye, without torquing it, or poking yourself when it comes through. So I'm just pulling through like that again, and we'll just keep going all the way down to uh, the end, and then once again snip it off, and we'll uh, burn, singe the nylon so that it's fused nice. Well, it's really looking like a sheath now. It's time to finish the edges. So the first thing that I do is use a sanding block with some sandpaper glued to it, and I sand the edges smooth. This is 120 grit sandpaper, and it really works well to get those smooth edges. The next thing is take uh, some water on a rag or paper towel and moisten the edges. We're going to do this again so they don't absorb so much dye. The water goes in first and the dye kind of sits more on top of the leather then and you don't have to use so much dye. And I find that the color is more even also if I do this. Then we're just going to again take a little swab or a paintbrush and we're going to use this homemade dye and go over the edges three or four times. Um, I'll actually probably let it dry a little bit and put a couple more coats. We're going to take care of uh, the inside, the edges, and we're also going to go over the stitches. So you can see I'm going over the thread of my stitches. It's getting dye down in there into the holes. I also put a dab on top of the uh, drain hole. 
and just giving it another coat here, getting a nice even dark brown, which is a color I like. And now it's time to polish with shoe polish. This is a step a lot of leather workers don't use. And um, shoe polish seems like just such a simple thing and people often omit it, but this is gonna add like an even color and then it's gonna protect your sheath very well. Shoe polish is great. It's formulated for shoes, which are in all kinds of weather. And it's a simple low tech way to finish out your sheath. And there we have it. A beautiful sheath for your knife, your Sugar Creek Forge build-along knife. Good luck as you make your sheath. I hope this was instructional for you, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Oh, that's right. You know what time it is. It's time for the Sugar Creek.